Good evening, Internet. I hope that you are doing well. We are back for the conclusion to Sucker for Love, Date to Die For, Chapter 1000. Let's find out what Roxy and Stardust are up to. Something is very wrong. Did I doze off while reading? My daydreaming always turns into regular dreaming whenever I do. Is this what I was reading? I've got to get home. I'm sorry for falling asleep in your store, but I've got to get... That escalated quickly. Someone hung themselves right next to me while I was sleeping? Is that Moo? Did Buck get to her? I feel sick. So, so sick. The floor slips under my feet and I fall back hard, loudly knocking books to the ground. I assume they're books. I can't see anything. Everything goes black. What an awful dream. Hey! Hey! Wake up, you! Uh, you look different. Oh my gosh, did I break the human? Stupid, stupid, stupid! Are you an alien? Uh, <clears throat> my aloof and distant nature and fall in love with me ironically an alien is playing with a corpse in front of me an alien is playing with a corpse in front of me this can't be real I must be dreaming still it's not a dead body promise it's just a doll I use to interact with humans sorry to scare you I was just hanging it up to dry see also hey I'm not an alien shock-offs are from earth Right, you were here before humans, weren't you? Shagas, huh? Plural. There's more of you just walking around on Earth. We live where all the undiscovered nightmare fuel hangs out. Bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Not my fault you guys went to space before 100 percenting your own planet. That's fair. We're like 100 miles from the ocean. What are you even doing all the way in the countryside? Well, one day, I grew tired of the darkness beneath the waves. And upon tentacle and maw, I skulked upon your shores for one brief... To open a bookstore? You can't write smut underwater. What a trivial reason. You know, I think that I would have heard on the news about giant tentacle monsters roaming through the country. <laughs> you think so? But I am a master of disguise and an expert on human linguistics. I've studied your culture extensively from the water, and I've mastered every language and can speak them in any accent. Check out my cowboy voice. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Pretty good. Whoa, it's like you're a real cowboy. Thank you, thank you. Though, to be honest, I only learned to read, speak, and write your languages so I could read your human books. They're far superior to cosmic scriptures. Don't get me started on the localizations. D did you only learn human language so that you could read smut? But that seems like a lot of effort. My complex motives are far beyond mortal comprehension. I thumb idly along the spines of books written in English. They have suggestive titles. You learned every human language just so you could consume all of our smut. You also make lifelong human, lifelike human models and learned every language that humans speak? I, I, I have a thing for humans, okay? Looking around the store, a lot of these books are Eldritch Curios and lore, but some of these books... Big Slippery Shoggoth Girlfriends, Volume 2. My Little Knight Gaunt Can't Be This Fetherelia Gaunt. There are explicit stories about love between humans and Elchitensties. I didn't know these kind of books even existed. Did she make all of these? And are you the one who's been writing my ultra dangerous reality bending ritual books? Nah. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mainly just write smutty dungeons and such. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just having trouble wrapping my mind around that. They seem like two completely distant skills. Yeah, those two hobbies are completely unrelated. 
I see what you did there. I raise an inquisitive eyebrow. Wait a minute. What? So you make smut books fantasizing about humans in Eldritch Gods meeting, and then also make spell books that would allow humans and Eldritch Gods to meet in real life. Wait, I know what it sounds like, but I can explain. Go ahead. You got nothing, right? I've got nothing. I'm a disaster for human elders love. <laughs> I can't blame you. You indirectly summoned reality-ending gods to our realm just so you could watch them date humans? I'd say I pretty directly summoned them, actually. Also, why the heck did you make the rituals so freaking scary? They're rituals for an outer god. They're all scary. All the time. Fair. Uh, well, if you're supposed to be helping me, why do you put the most important ritual at the very end? What? The uprooting ritual? Eldritch rituals are serious business. Doing them out of order could cause who knows what. And it's not like I've been asleep at the wheel here. I've been changing the books each time I find a potentially quicker, safer path to uprooting. Yeah, you've been doing good. But there's only so many options when humans outright can't produce some sounds needed for many incantations. I haven't had a problem so far. Say Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce? Worching, workist, where? Okay, you've made your point. All I was trying to say is that it's a cryptographic marvel that you can consistently perform these rituals, and that I'm a genius. That's all I'm really trying to say. Isn't it Worcestershire? 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 Oh, is that all? Besides, Roxy loves the rituals. She's a god, she likes rituals. And the scarier they are, the faster you fall in love. That's not how that works at all. It totally worked. Roxy likes you. Like, she likes you, likes you. Oh, she's got it bad. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm writing fanfics of the two of you right now. This stuff is hot. Let's see. Pets. Pining. Slow burn. One-sided. It's not one-sided. Wait, I mean, well, she's really gorgeous, and... I ship it. Wait, no. Size difference, age difference, mommy, monster girl. Wait, is Roxy a monster girl or a furry? Yeah, I'll add them both and let the algorithm work its magic. Roxanne Stardust. Oh my god! Your ship name is Rockstar! Ah! Or Starzan! Uh, I hate to kill the fawn, but a lot of people have gotten really hurt because you made this book, including me. It was never supposed to be like this. I thought only good things could come from summoning Roxy to your world. She just wants Earth to be one big happy family. And she's a wonderful mother. And she's kind. She's the only one who didn't laugh me out of Astrid's court when I suggested that humans and Eldritch entities belong together. In fact, she agreed with me. We made the book together, an all-in-one ritual book full of spells that would make the perfect date, plus an abort button, the uprooting ritual, in case the human needed to be rescued from Roxy. We picked the perfect human together too, a young, handsome human man who had already spent so much time and money fruitlessly trying to contact Roxanne on his own. He flew through the rituals, started a huge family in her worship, and grew the thousand to such a size that the whole world was under Roxanne's influence. They never really clicked like I had hoped, but he had his god, and Roxanne had her family. They were so, so happy and carefree. But you should never be carefree dealing with cosmic forces beyond reckoning. At some point, Buck decided to steal a smooch outside of Black Ceremony, completely out of order and without consulting the ritual book first. Instead of causing some obscure ritual to fail disastrously, something far worse happened. He accidentally performed a certain ritual perfectly, by pure bad luck, the Kiss of Immortality ritual. It was sealed with the smooch he stole. He tried everything to reverse his immortality. When nothing worked, he changed. So many people, 
so many humans that Roxanne considered her children. All these realities later, he's still tormenting her. I don't know if it's revenge or if he's got some other plan in mind, but he's never going away. What a big fat screw up this was. If Roxy of all the gods can't find happiness with a human, there's no hope for any of us cosmic entities. Between you and me, Roxy is the hottest one in the family by far. So, that's why I'm trusting you with my books. I hope it's not too weird to say, but... I think after seeing you time and time again, that I should have given you the book to begin with. Well, I'm glad the book eventually found its way to me, but it's like a passed baton. Every leg of the sprint leading up to me was significant and worthwhile. And if, I, if I've got to pass it on again, I think I'm okay with that. But I also think I would really like to be the one that gets to cross the finish line. The one who gets to show Roxy how far we ran together. Okay, that's it. You two are too perfect. Sorry, Roxy, you're gonna kill me for this. But you can't expect me to sit through a thousand episodes of Stardust dying before you can admit how you feel. Here you go, you crazy kid. It's the kiss of immortality ritual. Do us all a favor and end up together already. So we can end up like Buck? Wait, that's the same ritual that Buck did. Becoming permanent? This means I'll never die, no matter what. Even when reality ends again. Will I end up like Buck? Holding this sinister page fills me with palpable dread. This ritual is what started all of this. It's what caused Buck to go mad. It's what turned the thousand against Roxanne. It's what made every reality a nightmare. It's what caused me to suffer and perish countless times. But it's also what brought me to Roxanne. I think this is it. I think it's the key to ending all of this for good. It's how I can stop Buck and the nightmares. Oh? Fighting fire with fire? Not exactly. Once I cast this, my fate will be the same as Buck's. There's no takebacks. But I have the heart to live with what I'm given. No takebacks needed. I'm ready to accept with great uh, I'm ready to accept what great highs and lows eternity has in store for me. If you give love, it comes back. If I embrace eternity, eternity will embrace me. All right, now I'm really pumped. No more baton passing. I'm going. Are you coming too? No way, Jose. Looks scary looking. Um. Yeah, yeah, I know that I'm scary too. But I can't just run into the unknown like humans can. Shagots aren't brave like you are. I'm the only one that even left the sea for crying out loud. Don't worry. You don't have to come. I have your book. That's all I've needed so far. That's all I'll need now. Go get him, Stardust. No sign of anybody. This could be the end of my life as a mortal, couldn't it? All in all, I have to say it's been a blast. And whatever's ahead, I know there will be something to love. Summon the All Mother. Uh, hello? It's quite green outside. It's worth a try. We have our door back. Take you. Snuff the candles. Come on. Sorry it took me a while to start dreaming this time. I was too anxious to fall asleep. We've got three hearts. So, this is it. Buck is the only remaining member of the Thousand. Are you ready for what's to come? Is it a smooch? It's only hitting me just now that it, this kiss of immortality thing. Isn't it kind of like asking to marry her? Promising to be with her forever? Sealed with a kiss? 
No take backs. Holding this book feels like fumbling with an engagement ring in my pocket. Are you all right? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Um, Nervous? <laughs> uh, you don't even know. The butterflies in my stomach are building to the point of unbearability. Just as I'm about to swallow them down, a breeze blows into my room, carrying a foul stench that fills my lungs. I fall over, retching. My eyes sting and water uncontrollably, and I have to actively fight the urge to hurl. What's that smell? Did something die? No, something didn't. Oh, gross. He's here. I can sense him. You got the book? So he's just been rotting for millennia? Now or never. I prop myself up on one knee and open the book to the Kiss of Immortality ritual, revealing it to her. Kneeling? <laughs> you don't have to kneel to me for my ritual. Where did you get that? Moo! I thought I had something to say planned, but my mind is completely blank with nerves. Say something. Anything. Roxy, I... I only exist because you dream about me. Roxy, I... I only exist because you dream about me. Without you, there'd be no me. And when I look back on my life, and all the things that I got to see and do, it'd take me forever to say thank you. So, I will. Buck's inside the house. I've got to get going. Think about it, okay? I'm gonna get started on it, but I won't finish it if you don't say yes. Okay? Finally, here we go. One versus one. I've only I've got only one ritual to get through. Let's do this. To perform a kiss of immortality, simply kiss Roxanne Silva Oscura in the presence of a greater rot bloom. If there is no greater rot bloom present, stand in a room with Roxanne and at least one thousand rot bloom rot bloom flowers. Draw this symbol. It's the Pisces symbol. Chant. And then we just have to survive. This section of the book has been compiled from the dust of your past lives in order to ensure your current incarnation survives as long as possible. Suffering in this place has earned you this advantage, so adhere to this instructions precisely. If you hear a loud buzzing or sudden swarm of flying insects, flee. Move quickly and deliberately. In the event of seeing the flock of crow-like creature outside, immediately free to interior and without windows, open or close. If all sound has been stolen, panic loudly. Loud noises are your only salvation. Keep a running clock in your head. If you feel a sudden sense of dread and your heart begins to race, it is your natural prey instinct. Hide in a room with only one entrance and no open windows. If your vision is darkening or you catch glimpses of trees where they shouldn't be. Uh, I don't know what to do about the gas. Find any lit candles and stare directly at them. The trees will retreat from its glow. Do not look away. Listen carefully for the direction of the knocking. Move slowly towards the sound. If another sound distracts you, do not follow it. Knocking is your only guide. Are these voices? Predatory growling. We need to get to the room with only one entrance.
You notice corpses rising from the fields of flower. The second floor balcony is your only sanctuary. If the wall on the floors begin creaking loudly, the house itself has been given life by the volumes of mortal blood spilled within the soaked foundation. Exit before you're crushed. Thick mist will fill the lower levels of the house. Seek higher ground immediately. Okay, we've seen that. Megafauna hominids stalk sil silently and seemingly at random on possibly elongated limbs. Avoid being in a room with it for too long. If you hear the loud cry of a baby, flee to the heart of the woods. Is that the knocking? So we need to go to an inner room. Oh. Crap. the woods. Do not emerge until the candles blow out on their own. Be observant. When it says be observant, I assume it means I can't just stare at the candles. But I also don't know what I'm looking for. Are these babies tearing up my house? there. Alright, the flower should have bloomed by now. I just need to get back. The goat. Survive Buck's final encounter without dying once. Was that Roxanne's scream? I've got to get back. Click, come on. Hey, Lo. 
of bird. What are you doing to her? Scaring her awake. Now that you're here. Easier. I want to be so angry, but I can't be angrier than I am frustrated and confused. Why? Why would you do this? Tormenting us isn't going to change a thing. Why can't you just face the reality that you're immortal already? The reality is that I'm immortal. I couldn't care less. If the eternal sleeper wakes up, the end. Immortality or not. I vaguely remember reading something about that in Mu's library once. A god that dreams all of the other gods into existence, and by extension, all of their realities. Wait, that means... You're talking about ending everything. Everything, everything. How is torturing Roxanne supposed to do that? Why are you punishing her? To make her scream loud enough that the sleeper hears it. If she doesn't, maybe another god will. Any god that learns that I exist will start having nightmares too. Once I'm in their head, it's sheet clutching nightmares forever. I'll never stop. I only need one screamer. I'll find them eventually. I'm human. The ultimate persistence predator. And you would have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for this meddling cat. <laughs> and her human. Hello, handsome. Auntie Nyan Nyan? Threatening to terrorize my very sisters and granddaughters the way you so tortured my niece? I respect that. My silly flock of hands could use a good browbeating. But trying to speak to the eternal sleeper? Come now, that is the duty of a god, not a human playing pretend. I will articulate to you the difference. What a lucky break. I can complete the kiss. Wait a minute. If Auntie Nyan Nyan drags Buck into her dream, she's going to start getting nightmares too. Buck's going to end up in the mind of the god who talks directly to the Eternal Sleeper. That's exactly what he wants. Good. He's free. It's now or never. I've never had a bad dream in my life, but I have had dreams so wonderful that it woke, up, woke me up right at the best part. And if I become immortal, I'll survive through her waking up this time. Roxanne, I don't have the time to say it now, but... Well, when I ever have forever to say it. <clears throat> Roxanne, I don't have the time to say it now, but will when I ever have forever to say it? You've already said it. Time after time. I love you too. So you're okay with this? Mm. Was, was that a second kiss of immortality? Just a regular one. Stardust, since I met you, I wondered how I could be so lucky. How you could have appeared so suddenly, like a bright star in the darkest sky. I think it's because, despite everything, I never stopped believing in good. That someone like you had to exist somewhere. And you did. You are the good that I knew had to exist somewhere in this infinite cosmos. Stardust. You're the most wonderful thing I could have ever dreamed up. <laughs> Thank you, my twinkling Stardust. Grandgram, you're crying. Did you have another bad dream? Oh, Lynetta. No, child. Do you want to hear about it? What? But you never want to talk about your dreams. I had my reasons. I didn't want to fill your head with fear of humans. Now, I can tell you about love. Love? For humans. Esther. Hard to believe, I know. But I believe. In time, you just might come to love them too. Ew! <laughs> oh, keep it down, ladies. Sleep well? 
<laughs> it's us, I think. You know, out of oh, that's Buck. I thought it was the protagonist from the first game. Sorry. Where are we? Space between dreams. Get comfortable. Are you gonna try to kill me? Just get to sit here and stare at each other until the next dream starts. I'll get the bookmaker. Or I'll get caught by Nyamathotep. Or I'll go back to my original plan. You can't do any of that now. I'm here. And I'm not going away ever again. I think in a truly infinite cosmos, you find exactly what you're looking for. Eventually. You looked for cruelty in a cosmos of infinite volume and found it in no short supply. But you know what, Buck? When the dream starts again, I'm going to run barefoot through the grass. I'm going to watch scary movies. I'm going to love, be joyous, move, learn, cry, and feel so much that all of the bad is worth it. That's what I did when I was mortal. That's what I'll do now. That'll end. The clock is ticking on how long you'll still be able to experience any of those things. The clock was always ticking, Buck. And when it runs out, ashes to ashes, stardust to stardust. But there's things that are, uh, but there's things out there worth seeing before that happens. Things that make it all worthwhile. I swear it. You know what? Come on. This void is infinite, right? Then I bet there's an infinite number of things that make life worthwhile, too. Even out here. Stop me when you see it. Dedicated to my brilliant wife, Caroline Hunter, you make me a real sucker for love. Created by Akabaka. Composer Extra Spicy, vocalist Chisa, lyricist Geeky. Art by Midnight Mayan, Stephanie Esrom's Hirschbridge, Hirschbridge, Cleveland Mosher, Mo Rain Arts, David Liu, and Akabaka. Published by Dread XP. Made with Game Maker Studio 2. I wonder if it was Game Maker that was causing those pauses.
closer to seeing it all. Oh, looks like a new dream is finally starting. Ready to go duke it out again? Maybe later. I think I prefer to stay out here. It's peaceful. It'll take me a while to see everything. Thank you. I don't think you can 100% the void. Roxanne, I can't wait to see what you've dreamt up now. Isn't the, um, isn't the dream just starting over again? Come outside, Stardust. Before we do that, it's blocked by the others. It's blocked from the other side by something purple. I can't see clearly through the keyhole either. What's in the bedroom? All right, no posters in this reality. No flowers in this reality. It's weird that they have both an Asian style and a Western style toilet. I don't think I thought about that when we first played it. Strange, slowly writhing plant. I, I feel sick from the smell, but there's not actually a, a plant there anymore. Here's what the balcony should look like. There's an outdoor bath. Guess we can't go that way. Uh, anything in the TV room? Any heads in here? Guess not. So we can't go back to the heart of the forest. We can't go into the parents' bedroom, I'm assuming. What are we looking for? Uh, dining room and kitchen. No bowl of blood. Still have the pungent spices. The oil is gone. I wonder if there is a shopping bag full of other shopping bags. A beautifully morbid looking flower. This must be a rot bloom. It's weird that that's still there. Hi, Nani. Ah. Oops. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Nanny, how many times have we ambushed her? Of course she'd be jumpy. I said I was sorry. I couldn't think of anything better to shout while I jumped out. <laughs> Why did you have to jump out at all? Nani, Billy, kid, you're all here. And none of them have the stare. Like, of course, silly. Where else would we be? It's not like we can just leave the woods. You can never meaningfully leave the woods. But now that they've pretty much covered the whole planet, we can go everywhere. I can finally go shopping in Paris. And I'll be able to go on a world tour. My fans will love it. And oh, Billy, you simply must come with me on tour. I'll need a bodyguard, and you're perfect for the role. I'd rather eat my shoe. Billy, stop being cranky. Sorry. I didn't get enough violence out of my system before peace broke out. Oh, yeah. You should see outside, Stardust. Everything's different. It's a whole new world waiting to be re-explored. No reason to ever come back to this old place. Ugh. 
Can we please get out of here already? The wallpaper's peeling, the floorboards are rotting, and I'm pretty sure I just saw a rat the size of a chihuahua run by. Not enough of this gross old house to last a lifetime. This is her childhood home. Oh, I mean, uh, it's, uh, nice. Thanks. Wait, wait, wait. You knew that she lived here? I spent forever trying to figure that out. Why didn't you help me or, or leave me a note or something? I was your boss. What's your one rep max on bench press? <laughs> Guys, if it's all the same, I might take a moment to say goodbye to this place. I'll be outside in a sec. <sighs> no worries. The rest of your family already got their chance to pack up and say their goodbyes. Only fair you get your turn. My family is here too. Oh yeah, they're totes outside. Your folks are like really hitting it off with Roxanne. Color me shocked. Who could have possibly expected that a goddess of fertility and a married couple with 10 kids would get along? I mean, she's not wrong. But like I said, no rush. Especially if you don't want to get caught in the crossfire of their grandkids discussion. Take all the time you need. We'll wait for you. The trio steps out into the daylight, leaving me to, wi to what will likely be my last goodbyes to this house. You are Buck's replacement. You can be replaced too. Everyone is waiting for you. What do you think you're doing, Stardust? Well now, aren't you just full of surprises? When you first stumbled into these woods, cheeks wet with tears of rage, your only desire was to see these twisted trees burn. For a moment, I thought you'd forgotten your quest so easily in exchange for a flutter of lashes and a flash of thigh. It seems I may have misjudged your resolve. A mistake I do not often make. Those seeking to destroy the Black Woods inevitably become compelled to worship it. That boastful promise is printed in every version of this contemptible book. Will you prove them liars and burn them down in a fit of mortal defiance? Or will you prove them right and spend your immortal days simpering at my niece's cloven hooves like a love-struck fool in the very Eden you swore to raise to ashes? The agony of indecision suits you, little matchstick. Though I do hope you choose to burn it all down. I've never cared for happy endings. Or goodbyes, for that matter. <laughs> Ta-ta. Do we have the seed? I think we have the seed.
a truth ending. All right. Oh, wrong way. True end. There's one more. Um, there's one more uh, achievement that I haven't gotten yet. I'm not sure where it is, though. Uh, it's a hidden achievement, so I can't actually see what it is. Um, but yeah, that was Sucker for Love, Date to Die For, episodes 1, 2, 99, and 1,000. Um, there was a lot more there this time. It was a lot, uh, a lot more complicated uh, mechanically, which I liked. Um, I love Roxanne. Uh, amazing job with the writing and with the mechanics, uh, the new stuff, like the opening of the doors and being able to see if somebody's hiding behind a corner. That's really cool. Uh, there were a few spaces where it seemed like the, the RNG was like punishing in a way that I don't think that you intended. Uh, but other than that, I think that it was all very well done. Um, for the true ending for uh, episode one, um, I thought that uh, you had to put the, the goat head on the person that was being healed. Um, so I kept trying to put it on uh, uh, Nani um, and was wondering why it wasn't working. Uh, and then I finally figured out, oh, you, you, you as the healer wear it, not the person that's being healed. Um, so that's one thing uh, that could be clearer. Um, the true end for episode two was... I think it was really well done. Uh, it gives you the hint. Um, you get to go through and do everything uh, again. Um, it, it gives you a good uh, good chance to get it. Uh, you can't get it on your first playthrough, which I think is one weakness of it. Uh, I really liked the ending for uh, episode 99 or 999. Um, that was really good uh, because you, you could kind of do it just on the first try, you didn't need to go searching around for anything, uh, aside from the items, uh, but you didn't need to go poking around for anything. Um, and then I did like that there were two endings in episode 1000, that was really cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I have so many good things to say about this game. Uh, there was very little that uh, I would improve other than like a few RNG tweaks. Um, this was really good. Akabaka, I loved it. Uh, thank you for making it, and uh, I hope that you keep making these. These are really good. They're some of my favorite uh, favorite of these games. Favorite of these Dread X games that I like to play. So yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, I hope that you have a good night. Sleep well. And I will see you in the next video.